message, we started to put it into practice. If I'm really honest, Joe put it into practice more than I did. Yeah, um, and I'm still trying to catch up with her. And um, it's like uh, our brother um, Dan, who heard this training and went out and started putting it into practice straight away. Sometimes it's becoming childlike and keeping it simple. But I just want to encourage us all and remind us all today that the only hindrance to healing is in your believing. If you believe there are hindrances to the power of the Holy Spirit operating through you to heal the sick, it's that believing that is blocking the Holy Spirit from healing through you. Yeah? So the only hindrance to healing is that you believe there are hindrances to healing. But if you believe in the same way that when you believed in Jesus, that 2,000 years ago, that Jesus died on that cross to pay for your sins, yeah? And you were saved by believing. Do you agree with that? Mm -hmm. Yeah? So through that same believing, if we will um, dare to believe the whole of God's word, that healing is in the atonement, that, that in Jesus' sacrifice, healing was included, then in the same way that we believe salvation, we can believe the Lord to use our hands, that when, according to Mark 16, when we lay hands on the sick, yeah, and that can be just shaking somebody's hand, by the way, that's probably a culturally good way, after you listen to somebody's story, they're shared with you, that they're battling with something, and you can just say, especially obviously if they're a stranger, very rude of me, I didn't introduce myself, my name is, don't let go of that hand. You're now laying hands on the sick, Amen. if they've got a sickness. And then all you have to do, you don't have to even pray, because the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead is abiding in you. He doesn't come and go, he's not fickle, he's the same Holy Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead in residence in you because it's Christ in you it's no longer I who live but Christ who lives in me and he is the one who heals the sick amen we just do the laying hands and then we just ask the question how is that pain now yeah you know test it out see how you are now but I want to focus a little bit today on why healing works all right and it's just Encourage anybody that if you're new to the idea of healing and you're not sure, we the, the training we went through was by a man of God called Curry Blake. Okay, Curry Blake, R R Y, and it's divine healing training. It's a three-day course. All right, you can it's you can do some binge watching, do it in a day possibly, but there's a lot to take in. But in that teaching, every single tradition of men, Jesus says. It's the traditions of men, you know, those beliefs that there are hindrances to healing in this context of healing, that make the word of God of no effect. Now this word that is sharper than any two-edged sword, able to, be, you know, to divide asunder between, you know, even where our, our soul connects with our spirit and so forth, yeah? So this word of God is powerful. It cannot come back void. It needs to be in our mouths, spoken through faith, you with me? So in the subjects, that if there are different compartments of our brain, for example, healing, salvation, we're very renewed in that, that, that compartment of our brain to do with um, salvation. It's just we need to renew our mind in the area of healing, perhaps, yeah? But through that training, Curry Blake's teaching, divine healing training, um, every single tradition of man will be proven to be false and not biblical, okay? So, things like, for example, Paul, that people say that Paul had an eye problem. Well, if you follow the book of Acts, it says that Ananias came and laid hands on him and scales fell. So the scripture says that he was healed, yeah? And Jesus didn't partially heal people, he healed all. Sometimes he had to minister twice, yeah? But he, Jesus healed all. And Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So I encourage you to look at that training. There's also a guy called Jim Baker, if you're interested, Jim Baker, it's very good. It's like, his training is like, you're looking over the shoulders of Jesus, 
watching him train the disciples, um, and um, it's, a, it's an insight into the, the, the different healing accounts and so on. So a guy called Jim Baker, a oh, he's healing. Oh, yeah, yeah he's, he's, he's linked in with Paris Bible School. Yeah. So there's Andrew Wellmark Ministry. It's very much Grace and Faith Ministry. And um, his, 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 some, some good stuff, and it complements the divine healing training. So there's plenty of good stuff out there in the area of healing. But uh, if, I, uh, if I've got the technology working, I wanted to talk about um, <coughs> Another course that we, we, we completed with John G. Lake Ministries was called The New Man, okay? Now, I'll tell you a little story. There was a Chinese man who uh, heard this divine healing training, obviously in Chinese, okay? The man is in his 90s, right? And he started to realize that, okay, he's been a believer a long time, but wow, healing is for today, and I need to minister to the sick and see them, lay hands on the sick and see them recover. But he's, he couldn't seem to get any results in healing. So what, what they said to him was, you need to do the new man course. Now the new man course is that um, basically in Christ, we are a new creature, old things are passed away, all things have been made new, yeah? And uh, he did that course, and he under started to understand who he was, who he was in Christ, and his results shot up, yeah? Because if you, if you, the only hindrance in terms of healing is you believe there are hindrances to healing, but also um, it's this recognition that it's no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. There's this exchange that has happened when we became believers, where the old us was taken out and Jesus came in and you were made new. So the, 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 the blockage for healing can be that we are thinking too much about ourselves. And the only answer to that is focusing on who we are in Christ, and denying ourselves, taking up our cross, and doing what the Word of God says to do. Jesus says, heal the sick, raise the dead, cast out demons, and so on. So we start to do what the Word of God says. And when we start to do what the Word of God says, we're no longer um, deceiving ourselves, you know. We, we, we are becoming uh, doers of the Word. Now, if you've got your Bibles, I'm just going to turn quickly to Ephesians. And we're going to focus on why healing works and how um, to get that confidence in the Holy Spirit healing through you. So we're going to read uh, Ephesians chapter 1, verse 3. It says, Blessed be the God and the Father, the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who, God the Father, has, past tense, yeah, past tense, yeah, 2,000 years ago, blessed us, yeah, when Jesus hung on that cross, he blessed us with how many spiritual blessings? Every spiritual blessing, yeah? So if there's a spiritual blessing, that we believe we are missing, it's only because we believe we're missing it, because it says here, he has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places, yeah? So where are the heavenly places? Yeah, in heaven, yeah? In the heavenly places, where the exact address in Christ, yeah? So in it's who we are in Christ, that makes all the difference, yeah? That we have the name of Jesus and faith in his name. So just as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world to be holy and blameless before him in love. So he has chosen you before the earth was even born to be holy and blameless before him in love and that is in Christ yeah in Christ so as you start to focus 
focus on who you are in Christ, everything starts to change. Yeah? Because we can't have fear anymore because we're in him. Amen? So he predestined us to adoption. Yeah? So you were predestined to be adopted as sons to himself through Jesus Christ. So Jesus is the way according to the good pleasure of his will. Yeah? To the good pleasure of his will. To the praise of the glory of his grace, which he graciously bestowed on us in the beloved. So in him we have redemption through his blood and the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace, which he lavished on us in all wisdom and insight, making known to us the mystery of his will. So some people say that there's still a mystery, but the mystery has been revealed, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Does that make sense? So the whole plan of God from the beginning was to get Jesus into, believe, into, into people, that they become believers, that you would be a new species of being that never existed before. As, as a person who's saved, you are a new species of being in Christ. Amen? So he's made known to us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure, which he purposed in himself, as a plan for the fullness of time. And that was kept, that plan, when Jesus was here, that plan had to be kept secret from the Pharisees, from the demonic realm, because Jesus had to go to the cross, yeah? And if they'd known that the cross was the ambush where the devil would be defeated, they wouldn't have crucified Jesus. Does that make sense? And of course, just before Jesus went to the cross, he went to the whipping post, and uh, he paid for our, our, our healing as well. Now, I just um, um, want to share a little bit of my own testimony, which is basically, I uh, was quite a different accent. I was born in England, born in Birmingham. Uh, my, my parents were upwardly mobile. Um, you know, they say, you know, sort of heading towards being middle class or whatever. You used to say, Dave, don't say grass, say grass. <laughs> I mean, my dad spoke quite posh. So, um, but uh, they were, uh, I had a, a good childhood in many ways, but when I was probably about the age of 11, and I'm being very vulnerable with you now, because uh, this is something that uh, I think we all need to be aware of, I became uh, addicted to type of cocaine, I know that sounds crazy, at age 11, but it was called digital cocaine, okay? Too much television, all right? Okay, and then before the days of computing and so on, I became literally hooked to the screen, yeah? Um, I became disconnected emotionally from my family, and I literally, it was a horrible film, but I don't even mention it. But I, I became sucked out of the real world into the digital world. Yeah, I would spend hours and hours and hours just my life disappearing, just watching program after program. And um, I, uh, uh, how do I describe this? I became addicted to images, bad images, okay? And I was looking for them as I watched the TV. And for me, it became an escape. Uh, so I went through the whole of school, um, basically hooked on what neuroscientists now recognise through any screen, you know, whether it be a smartphone or whatever, it's possible to go into this state where you're getting a high dopamine hit <laughs> because you're getting pleasure from the screen, and it's it's creating a an addiction, yeah. So I also became addicted to pornography. I'm being really vulnerable with you here. Apparently, statistically, about 90% of men are, are, uh, uh, watch view pornography, and that'd be various levels of addiction. And of course, you've got things like kids that would play back-to-back -back gaming, 
and get put on, you know, the, again, it's something that happens, happening in the brain. The brain is getting a rush of dopamine, and life is boring because, because of, um, you know, compared to the high that you get from, from, viewing, from viewing whatever it is. So I just wanted to mention something called Brad Huddleston. Okay? He wrote a book called Digital Cocaine, if you're interested in, in hearing more about this. But the good news in Romans chapter 12, in Romans chapter 12, you know, if you were to look at it, if you, if you were to scan a brain of someone, say for example, that does back-to-back -back gaming or is addicted to pornography, you would see, like, imagine you're flying over a, a forest, a pine forest, okay? And you're in Canada, and there have been some forest fires. So as you fly over, you can see all the charred black areas of trees where there's been this fire, all right? Now, that is, you describe that in terms of neuroscience. There's the healthy trees of, of thoughts which are healthy. You learn the piano or some sort of practical skill, and then there's healthy trees. You know certain scriptures, healthy trees, where you, they really become a part of your life. But there's areas of toxic thinking where it's like charred remains, you with me? And it's almost like there's brain damage there. And this is, um, the good news is that no matter what damage has been caused, you know, and of course, things like this, for, for myself, with pornography addiction, digital cocaine addiction, there was lots of depression, lots of shame, lots of uh, you know, really negative uh, uh, chemicals pumping through my body and uh, you know all linking in with depression and so on and i mean it, you know with drug actual drug addiction as well it's the same part of the brain you're getting that high that dopamine hit and so on and you need more and more to get that same same high but um the the bible gives us hope that um we can you know where it says we can be transformed by the renewing of our minds so i'm just going to read that part out to remind us so romans 12 verse 1 and 2. So this is Paul, and he urges, he urges, he's on his knees begging, basically. That's what it says in the Greek. He's on his knees begging you, us, the church.